Okay, getting on here with this GE Super Bass. This is the one that had the uh, no transmit and had the capacitor that belched out all over the circuit board. So, as you can see, this has been, uh, the upper board has been pulled. And I said it's going to just kind of have to hang there out of the way. Always recommend putting some, I just use painter's tape um, along the uh, faceplate because when you have the radio setting down, this board's going to be resting on the faceplate, so you don't want to, you know, scratch up your, especially if it's a nice one like this, you don't want to go damaging the faceplate. But, uh, as you can see in here, now that I have the upper board extracted, the underneath of that capacitor that had leaked, right here, you can see all the, the corrosion has actually gotten th soaked through the circuit board traces, and you can see all the corrosion there. So, and then, and that would be this one right here. So let's just really quick get that little critter popped out of here. The Sony Bond, that's what that kind of tearing noise is you hear. It's that Sony Bond glue. Ah, uh, yeah. It's definitely, you can see the glue, which this stuff in itself becomes con corrosive as it gets, as it dries out, gets hard, and gets darker. It starts to cause all of its own problems. But there we can see the, the damage in there. I'll get all that cleaned up and check the traces and make sure nothing's broke. You know, no broken circuit traces. And you can see, see there, all the corrosion. Let's see, it's spread out pretty far. It leaked out this side, so it's out to here. So I'll remove some of these surrounding components. Because like I said, i got to make sure you know, this one, some of the pass-throughs and whatnot. I'll get all those components removed. Make sure I get all of this gunk cleaned off. Because like I say, it's corrosive and it's soaked in. So I want to try and get all that neutralized so it doesn't ever happen again and see if any of these traces are actually completely just broken. Um, and once we get, get that done, I'll continue on with this so you can see what it looks like then. Okay, back with the GE Super Bass again, cleaning, cleaning up down here. So, as you can see, uh, i got a different light here. There's all the traces cleaned up there. So we've got a little bit more scrubbing to do, but that's pretty much the extent of what's going to get cleaned. But this trace here is actually broken in places you can see it eating their way so much. It had leaked out the whole way back to about here to here. It leaked out well into here. Anywhere I saw where there was where the uh, silk screening it bubbled up on the traces has been scrubbed off. But like I say, so it had come out here all along in here, all over the place. So everything else looks pretty good. I mean, there's some you know minor pitting on some of these traces, um, but this trace here, as you can see, it's broken in several spots, you know, and really thin in others. So this one will get cut right about here, and it's pitted to hold it. And what, if I'm going to actually replace a trace, that's one of those. Just go ahead and do the entire part, everything that's you know corroded. So. I'll cut this one about here, so it'll be you know, lap soldered in here and up into here. And you can see I've pulled up some of these other components that are loose. They're out of the holes, so I could gain access in here to get really see how bad it was and get it cleaned up really well. And also in several of these holes, like here, here, and here, those are actually pass-throughs. They did not use, like I say, these are double-sided circuit boards but these do not have any type of pass-through. Um, so it is not a through, what they call through-hole plated hole. So um, what they did was in these positions, if you see all these little things sticking up here all over the all over the board, you'll see these little pins sticking up. Well, that's all that is. It's just a pin. If you look down here, there's actually a couple of them laying that I've taken out. So that's all they are. They're just little, basically, piece of 
thick copper wire, more or less. It's actually a pin cut off of some, some type of terminal, but that's basically what it is. It's just a little, and then it's soldered on each side of the board. Oop, camera flipped around. Flashlight. But what they do is, so it's soldered on this side and then soldered on the trace on the other side. So like I say, this trace here, this main one, will get all of that will get replaced. The rest of it, I'll make sure it's cleaned up really good. And then once I get this trace in and epoxy overcoat this one, I'll go ahead and just put some epoxy overcoat back over all of the bare copper here that I've cleaned. And that way it'll be protected again. And then on the what's actually the top side, you can see here, it's pretty nasty too in here. It's corroded really bad in this area. And actually the ground, so this this hole here, and this is actually the other side of one of those pass-throughs, that hole right there. So this is the, the pot, that electrolytic capacitor that actually caused all this problem, being this one, okay? This capacitor was in these two holes, this one here and this one here. So this is the, pos the positive lead and the negative lead. And of course, as you can see, actually where that comes through, there's really nothing touching anymore. There's a little copper trace here, but it's all bare. So that's basically completely disconnected from the ground plane of the radio, of the circuit board. So same thing is going to happen under here. The only difference is, since this has good copper all around it, and this is, like I say, the ground, the ground plane... Uh, probably what I'll do is, it's just going to save time and money. Um, I mean, if you want to make it beautiful, yeah, you could cut cut this entire trace out. But like I say, all this, there's a little bit of pitting here, but it's still good. It's The most damage is here, and that's where it, it actually leaked through the hole. That's that's why this happened. It leaked through the hole, ate away at the copper trace, and then le ended up leaching out all over the place out of this hole. Um, and that's why this one's still good. It leaked through on this side. That's how it got on the opposite side of the board. So... Probably what I'll do is I'll just clean this really good. I'll excavate that slightly just to get, make sure I get all the gunk out of there. Um, and then when I recap the radio, when I put this capacitor back in, I can just leave the lead along and fold it over. onto. Like I say, all of this trace around in here, it's all good. It's all connected. So there's really no need to... I mean, you know, that's one of those you can if you... But even once you put this board down, you'll never see it again. Actually not even just the board you have this shield like I had said you see there's the ground wire I'd been talking about earlier and that's that ground wire actually goes right down here but you've got this RF shield that separates the two plates so you know, once this is placed in there you're never going to see that anyhow um, so yeah like I say I'll probably what I'll do is I'll just do a full clean that out really good make sure there's absolutely no corrosion left in there and get rid of all that residue and I'll just I'll make sure this cleaned up, you know, spotless, clean it off with some isopropyl, and fold the, just leave the lead along, fold it over, and get back into this good good area back in here. And then uh, I'll do the same thing on, as I'm going to do on the other side of this board. I'll epoxy overcoat everything when I'm done so it's, you know, good and protected again. So just thought I'd show what it looks like before I get any farther here. Okay, we've got the uh, circuit traces repaired here. See, everything's new trace has been stuck in, and everything's been epoxy overcoated. And then all the tra actually all those traces that you saw were copper that I had cleaned up before. I actually tinned those first, so I apply a good a good flux to them, a gel flux, and then uh, tin them before I even epoxy overcoated it. And of course, in between everything you do when you're doing stuff like this, make sure you clean clean it off. So, and then here is the top side the other side it had been all corroded you can see that's all did the same thing to everything there tinned it and then epoxy overcoated it and then, of course when you're doing stuff like this try to be careful you know um, you know that's been epoxy overcoated trying to leave you know, ah! of course I just jabbed it with my screwdriver damn it <laughs> I have to go back and fix that it hasn't completely cured yet, but uh, try and leave your solder pads, you know. Damn it. Get the screwdriver out of here. Trying to look under the camera. I can't, no depth perception with the camera. But, uh, yeah, 
when you're putting the epoxy down, try not to get any on your circuit traces. So yeah, like I say, that piece right there, I just, I'll go in there and clean that off a little bit. But, uh, and there's that, like I say, the tray that completely corroded out around here. So I left a little bit extra exposed right here. And I, what I'll do is when, because that capacitor electrolytic that it leaked goes from this one and this hole here. And this hole is actually epoxied shut at the moment from the other side. Because everything I was repairing up there is so close to the hole, that's not a problem. Um, I've got plenty of time. I still have to completely recap this radio. So, and of course, I can't get this board out without a lot of work on solder and a lot of wires. Um, so I can't stick this on a uh, circuit board preheater. And I'm not going to stand here all day with the you know, a hot air gun trying to cure it. Like I say, I've got plenty of other work to do, so I'm going to just lay a piece of fish board over top of this so nothing gets dropped in it while I recap, recap the top board, change all the electrolytics on this. And once this epoxy has completely cured, then I can easily go back in. Now, this isn't the right size drill bit in my hand drill, but just a little small, you know, hand drill, any of the holes that any epoxy got into. Because like I say, this board is not... The, the holes, you know, in between the top and bottom are not plated through. So I can just wait for the epoxy to cure and then take a small handle. Like I say, I'll stick the smaller drill bit in here. That's definitely too big for this. But uh, and I'll just clean the holes out then after the epoxy is completely cured and it's hard. And then I can install those components, you know, in this area in here, everything that had been removed to do the repairs. So... I guess that'll pretty much do it for uh, the repairs on this. Cause like I say, there's not much more to see. Um, and I'll do a, a probably a separate video once I have have this completely back together. All the electrolytic capacitors and the tantalum capacitors changed in this. So you can get a good idea of what this looks like and how it performs after it's done.